Good morning everyone and welcome back. I'm just setting the shed up because I'm about to go and get the heifers. I'm going to bring them in here. I need to run them through, not that part of the shed, but I need to run them up here and DNA test them. I'm sort of running out of time. I'm booked in for the 15th, I think, for those DNA tests to go through the lab and that is in a week's time, so I haven't got a lot of time left. There is a little bit of sun around at the moment, or I can see the sun, which has been pretty rare. It's been not real wet, it's just been sort of like real dull, and we sort of get these showers keep coming through. It is just, yeah, the ground's saturated at the moment. There's a lot of mud around, and it is supposed to rain pretty heavy tomorrow afternoon. Like, we're actually supposed to get quite a bit, so I sort of want to do it while the weather's, weather's holding. Here's all the tests here. I've got to redo some of the cows too, but it's just all samples. I should have got a non-return or a return bag. Yep, cool, sweet as. Some of the cows, I think there's about eight of them. They couldn't get a good reading from or something like that. So I've got to go and redo them, take another sample, and I'll probably send it in with these. Just keep them in separate bags, but yeah, that'll sort of tidy that up. I've also got the drill coming in today. They're gonna to plant this in an annual. There's a couple of cages out there from when I did the trials. You can sort of see them just there. I need to go and get the tractor and pick them up. There's five of them, so I'll just pick them up and go and put them maybe just in that other paddock because they need to go back out again once it's drilled. I'm thinking I'll go and put these girls on the yard because they can stay there and wait for a while. And then I'll go and do those cages so then at least the drill can come to its thing. I don't need to be there for it. But I've started these girls on the annual, hoping they're just gonna follow me. Make it so much easier. They have been to the yard a couple of times, so they do know where they're going. Come on, there we go. It's not going too bad on here, but they are making a few sort of dark patches like in here, which I'm hoping will recover all right. It's just been a little bit hard at the moment, being so wet, like the ground's so wet that when we get little bits of rain come through, they do make a bit of a mess. I'm trying not to, I did shift them twice yesterday. We sort of got a shower come through in the afternoon, I thought oh, I'll put them on another break so they don't make a mess in that one, otherwise by the time I got there this morning it would have been pretty black. This was the first break I gave them and it rained heaps that night. Didn't think it was going to, but it did. Probably in hindsight I probably should have pulled them off, but didn't really know what the weather was going to do, so they have made a little bit of a mess, like there's a little bit of pugging in there, but you can see it is coming back, which is a which is a good sight. No, you know where you're going. Come on. I had a few people saying the heifers are looking real dark this year. So you see a heifer like that, which is pretty dark. I think she will be, but I think once they lose their winter coats in the spring, they should be looking lighter again. It's a nice ready looking one there though, isn't it? Come on. And they can just wait there until we're ready. They can just wait there until it's planted and then I'll put them out about a week after but they're a metre by metre and see this mesh on top it was just to sort of stop the cows eating it because what's getting measured was everything that's under the cage and the chicory was growing up through these big squares that rebar sort of looking stuff so they put that chicken wire over to stop the cows sort of nipping the tops off because otherwise it would uh, affect the results but the whole point of them was because somebody was doing a bit of a trial in there to measure how much 
yield we were getting from a crop of chicory although it was a pretty not unfair but it was an unusual year to do it because it rained so much so they measured the chicory from when it was planted or actually from when the paddock was sprayed out and they compared it to this grass paddock right next door so there's five cages in here and they're measuring the yield from the from the pasture as well the results haven't quite got back to me yet i think we're having a bit of a meet up at some point soon i think to, to sort of discuss the trial where there was me and four other local farmers and it was to see sort of whether chicory was worth doing i think originally they were sort of comparing it to maize but they also wanted to see the sort of difference between a pasture crop and a chicory crop so this year because it was so wet and we got good growth through the summer it would have been better just leaving it in grass i, th I think but yeah that was the initial indications but i guess i won't know till we go and and sort of discuss it and the reason we are putting the cages back out again is because the chicory didn't do as well as the pasture but once we put an annual in through the winter we might sort of catch up some of that production so it is going to be interesting but once i know more results i'll get back to you on that one i've just put a few fences up in front of the heifers so when they're done they can come over there dads being the town so hopefully he's back now and we can go and make a start i gave bills a ring from finches he said it might be a little bit wet and greasy to make a start in there because they'll make a mess but they're going to come and have a look and see what they think if they think it's good to go they're going to they're going to do it. it would be good to get it out of the way and done because then it's like the last thing but i don't want them to make too much of a mess either so i'll play that one by ear that's what we need one of them come on up you go Try and jam them up, make it easier. Six would be good. Come on. All right, that'll do. Seventy-six. Three. Getting through it slowly, only got about 20 to go maybe, 25. The ones that have been done, they're just waiting in the race and then we'll go and put them on some grass once we're done, they can all go on together. All done, hard to believe that that's 74 samples in there. Got all my numbers and stuff, so now I just need to actually put those samples in the fridge in a little Ziploc bag. I've printed a bit of paper out because I need to go through it now. I've got my highlighter, and I'm gonna go through all these numbers and just check them off to what I have on record to make sure that um, what I have is, is correct come tagging time. I think that there might be a couple of cows that I've recorded have died that might be alive and, and vice versa so that's sort of the whole point of that which yeah it's a little bit of a muck around but it's better to do it now than when I come to tag them and realize that oh no she's not on the records or oh, I'm missing missing tags for that one so or missing that that whole animal so do it now get it sorted makes it easier down the track anyhow I better let these girls go they'll be waiting for their feed a little bit later today than normal this is going to be interesting I've made a little bit hard for them because I need to get them onto that break there and I don't really want to run them through that top gateway so they're going to come around here then I'll fence a bit of a bit of a race up the side here and then up the paddock and they're actually going just up on the hill there and they'll go there this afternoon or well it's about lunchtime now so a little bit later than I would have liked and then I might come over late tonight and then shift them down to this to this bottom break. Oh, steady girls, there's a fence there. And they hate going back on themselves, but that's all right. Come on. Oh yeah, might be all right, sweet as. Come on. Oh, easy as. Not too bad at all. Going forward, I'm gonna give them two breaks. I just need them to fly through this annual, because it's so warm at the moment, we're getting quite a bit of growth and, and it's actually getting quite long. In some places it's falling over. So 
We need a fly through with them. Could put the milkers in there, I suppose, but it's just easy with these girls. It's feed for them. And tomorrow I'll probably give them a morning break, an afternoon break, and then I'll shift them. I might try and move them a little bit earlier tomorrow, but yeah, shift them in the afternoon because if we are going to get a heap of rain, I don't really want them to pug up this this annual. Because it grows so well through winter, I'll put them on a permanent paddock where they sort of do a little bit less damage. They're pretty happy now. They're going to get a, quite a big break this afternoon, but it is quite watery, so they do they do need quite a bit of it. Time to chuck the girls on the pad, but you can see they were in here yesterday and made a little bit of a mess around this gateway so i've got my ice cream container here full of seed i'm just going to go and sprinkle it around and and hopefully it germinates and, and starts to look a little bit better than it does i was going to let them walk straight in but i thought if i shut those gates again hopefully these cows will sort of compact some of that seed down, which will help. These girls look like they're ready to be shifted too, so I'll do that and just set a break up for them tomorrow in here. I'll just split that break and just sort of runs up there into thirds maybe. Happy again. I have left a little bit up the top here, which isn't too bad. They've only sort of had four hours in here, so they could have had a little bit longer, but thought I'd move them. You can see from a couple of days ago, they've chewed that break down a lot harder, and it will recover, all right? Well, this annual recovers real well, and it was fine. They haven't made a mess, so that's all right. They probably just were a little bit short. Check that out though, the permanent grass is up, which was in this chicory paddock, it's looking good. It's a weird looking plane, haven't seen one of them before, maybe it's a private private jet. But this is the paddock that I undersowed at the same date as that permanent, and it's looking really good. You can see the drill rows here on these sort of bearer patches. You can see the new grass, there's one drill row right through there. So it's looking awesome. Just like that, they need to go in the fridge. I can go in there. I need to fill out one of these forms that goes with it. Right, heifer's done. I went through at lunchtime and sorted these cows out, so there's seven to do in the morning. I might try and tidy that up and send it all together in the same slip, which would be handy, but there's four in the young herd and three in the older herd to do. And I've also got a little bit of homework on the side I went through before with all those tabs and sorted out these cows. So everything highlighted is a cow that is currently here. I put two over here. We didn't actually DNA test because they're empty, number two and five. So if we can save, uh, well, what is it, 20 bucks not doing them each, why not? And these are the cows which I haven't highlighted that I didn't get a sample from, so they are currently not on the herd. And then these cows down here, I must have culled them, but I don't know why, because they're actually in there. That's kind of annoying, I'm not sure why I did it, but I'll just give Mind a ring or LIC who I do all this through, and they sort of help you through it at their end on the computer, which is pretty handy. So I need to do that, and then that'll tidy that job up. Like I was saying, it just makes it easier doing it sooner rather than later. But other than that, pretty much sorted. It's actually awesome to get that job done because going forward now I have to do the calves every year. These cows, they're already on the database. And what will happen now is that those samples will go into the lab. It'll take a couple of months to get the results back. But I don't really get any results from it because I'm not sire or dam matching in them, so that's their mother and father. So they're not getting matched up to them because I've already got their details. So they're just going to go onto the database, or their DNA is, so that when we keep replacements from them in the future, it's like right there. So we just match the calves up, boom, done. Easy as that. But that will pretty much do it for this video, guys. So hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up like always, and see you next time.